Hi, I'm Angela and today I'm with Nesha. Nesha is a breath expert and has been forming like breath miracles globally for over 20 years and has impacted over 10,000 individuals. So how did your journey into breath begin? Yeah, so my journey began 20 years ago when I was doing yoga and meditation and I was already practicing breathing techniques. So I started getting aware that how, my, how I breathe affects how I feel, how I breathe affects my thinking habits, how I think, and also it affects my behavior. So I literally realized that if I wanted to change my life, if I wanted to change who I am, if I wanted to feel better, if I wanted to... Uh, use my full potential in life I had to work on my breathing habits mm -hmm. because breathing is habitual and many people misunderstand that it's like many people think uh, breathing can only affect us when we use breathing techniques but but because it's habitual, because it's happening naturally, we need to work on our breathing habits. So we need to work on our habits, on changing our habits. If we want to change who we are, if we want to change our thinking habits, and if we want to change how we live our lives. But how did you learn about breathing? Like, how did you even realize that yeah. breathing or breath pay, played such a huge impact yeah. in your life? Like, how did you find it? Yeah. Like, so it's like it's. It, just didn't happen overnight. Okay. It took me a process because the first time I realized breathing affects my life big time was when I was doing breathing techniques because when you use a breathing technique you can calm yourself down, you can uh, you can just hyper up, you can just have lots of energy, you can use breathing techniques to concentrate, you can use breathing techniques for lots of different reasons. So I was like, hmm, my breathing affects my psychology and I wanted to know more about it. So I trained myself on breath work. I went to breath work seminars, breath work workshops, and I graduated from the Transformational Breathing School. I became a facilitator, training. Then before that, I got into holotropic breathing. So I uh, studied holotropic breathing, and I took, I went to holotropic breathing workshops, and then. Uh, the more I went deep into breathing, so I tried rebirthing and I learned about rebirthing and biodynamic breathing. So there were lots of breathing techniques, breathing uh, systems I tried. Then the more I learned about it, the more I learned about how I uh, how my breathing affects my psychology, I wanted to go deeper into the yeah. background, into the scientific process around it. Then I trained myself on respiratory science and behavioral science and I started working with a university in Wyoming and I started working in Istanbul, I started working with psychiatrists and psychologists and behavioral scientists and then we created a system called breath coaching. It's very much influenced by transformational breathing, breath work, holotropic breathing and rebirthing and yet our training is a little different because we uh, don't only work on the scientific level but we work a lot on the consciousness and a lot on the spiritual level so there is a whole philosophy on the background working around the breathing so habits. Basically like you know you're you've been impacting children and you know you've been different from a young age and yeah. just like impacting them but what were the challenges that you've faced like personally growing up so you built a successful business yeah. but what are the personal challenges as a woman as a business woman yeah. have you found like yeah I found not everybody wants to transform I found out that I use all my gifts to transform people and get them to a big to a higher realization of love and forgiveness mm -hmm. so it's like i can just it's, it's like in my journey about myself i have no limits i mean my experience with myself has been always like that so it's like to transform you or to trigger the points you've been running away from yourself i can use all my abilities like i can just cry in front of you i can get mad i can just push you back pull you forward whatever it's like being a human is such a gift mm -hmm. and i had the privilege to be able to use all my gifts where like full potential to you know do whatever I need to do where people are not like that so yeah. more, most people are limiting themselves they get uh, intimidated with feelings it's mm -hmm. like when you show your feelings when it's out there it, 
people get intimidated and people get a little and pe more, more and it's like uh, many people are not aware of the fact that you are only watching yourself in the world yeah i mean whatever you look at you just see yourself so me being a transformative tool and transforming everyone I was the one who was transforming my whole life, so I'm literally living in transformation where many people are not like that. So when I bring that transformative energy, if you're a person who don't want to be transformed, if you're a person who don't want to see what you can't see, and you, if you're a person who wants to go on with your judgments about yourself in the ego consciousness, this and that, it's like you're going to see everything you judge in a human being in me because I'm willing to transform that and I'm willing to mirror that to you. So my challenge was, even if I knew it, my challenge was, it's like if you're the biggest mirror holding the yeah. space for people, getting face to face, unaware people uh, look at you and they think it's you who is the bad, but it's like it's their eyes, yeah. you know, it's who sees it. So it's like you. there has been lots of blaming, lots of judgment, lots of this, lots of that. And I'm like, I'm a fully 100% free person mm. and I'm always be beyond your judgment. Okay. So what other kind of like, so breath obviously like cures over 30 types of illnesses yeah. plus uh, yeah. that you told me. So what kind of illnesses yeah. are there? So there's anxiety, depression. Yeah. Yeah, what, like, yeah it's like things? dysfunctional breathing habits are the reason for 200, more than 200 over, over sicknesses. 200. Wow. Yeah, sicknesses. there are lots okay. of symptoms. Okay. And yet, as I told you, it's like for total healing, yeah. You need that healed consciousness. Like mm -hmm. I have, I've done lots of things. I've done lots of dangerous things. I have had crazy limiting dysfunctional behaviors. And yet, mm -hmm. because of the consciousness level I was in, I could never get sick. Okay. Ever. It's like I don't remember a time I was sick. And sickness is a level in the consciousness. Okay. So people who have some sicknesses have chosen a sick consciousness. And even if it's once in your lifetime, mm. it, you're going to be initiated in that energy. Like I'm a person who never ever chose that sickness ever. Like I don't remember, you know, like... I mean, whatever sickness is like cancer, you know, yeah. like I don't remember even one time in my life getting in that presence that of energy, that yeah. energy. So that's what's making the difference. It's like there are, it's like in healing work, I'm trying to tell that to people. It doesn't have to be me. It's like, I don't want to sound like you have to come to my seminar, but it's like, if you are interested in healing, in a healing process, if you want the best of it, you have to find the people who are already healed. You don't go to somebody's seminar who was sick and then healed herself. It's like cancer and then healed yourself. It's like she already got into that sickening, sickness, mm -hmm. ego consciousness, and then got into the miracle conscious. Okay, she got healed. But it's like there are people who never ever got into that sickness, ever. Oh. They are the healed. Yeah. They are the chosen ones. They are the not chosen but it's like they are the healing energy itself mm -hmm. like we have to chase for those people yeah. you don't go after people who have problems you have to chase people who doesn't have any problems yeah. materially physically you know to get well so do you personally find any challenges when you were going into breath work and mm -hmm. obviously um like growing yeah. up and it not yeah. being the norm like did yeah. you find that yeah. a challenging yeah the challenge area? was actually i mean it's like how i vivid, how i see it is once a person is connected connected with who she is or he is in the deeper level nothing can stop her it's like what i experienced was that it's like there were 
people you know saying you know you studied architecture how come you're doing breath work now why my mom my dad my relatives what's this breath breath work nobody knew about it like in turkey nobody even knew about yoga and meditation i'm talking about like 20 years ago yeah. and breath coaching everything started with me so nobody even knew about it so imagine there's a whole country <laughs> nobody even knows about and there's this woman talking about the importance of breath and breath coaching <laughs> Of course, it was a bit silly in the beginning, yeah. but was it a challenge for me? No, it wasn't a challenge for me because I was deeply connected with who I was and I was just expressing myself like I do now and nothing could stop me. Like still, it's like, no, but if you're connected with your mission and your gift, nothing can stop you. It's that, you know, and my challenge was, it's, I think it's the challenge of every person, every limitless person yeah. it's like if you're a person who is free yeah. and if you're a person who doesn't depend on people's ideas yeah. and if you're a person who doesn't care about what people think what they do but you're doing your thing 24 hours a day seven days a week hundred percent then what the biggest challenge will always be rumors and judgments and people who can't do that mm -hmm. so it's like over the years my biggest challenge was because I was going non-stop 100% and like maybe with miles per hour. <laughs> maybe more 100 <laughs> miles per hour and maybe more the other people who were limiting themselves and who were not yet there like who did not have that power and freedom but that's their choice I mean they can but they don't let themselves be creates all kinds of rumors and judgments and this and that and over the years it's like when you go with 100 miles a kil 100 miles an hour it's like you don't have time to just look back and just check what people are saying yeah. it's like who cares well, you just yeah. go so but the 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 the, the challenge was uh, my breath coaches or my breath family there were people getting affected by that because they were not like me yeah and that was a bit challenge because it's like if it's an outsider and there are rumors and this, but it's like if it's in the family, mm -hmm. somebody in the breath coaching federation, in the breath coaching family who got into that and they're also stopping themselves, you feel a little bit sad and I'm like, what to do? And you yeah. just have to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So 20 years ago, you started this in Turkey and now I guess is it accepted? And yeah. Like, it's, a, it's a legal job now in Turkey. Wow, that's we, we did it, we did it. Like we've been working hard on that. We've been working with the government for the past two years. Okay. And now it's legal, it has its standards. Because I don't know if it's like that over here, mm. but it's like in Turkey, when something gets to be popular, everything admits, everything, everybody says that they're doing the same thing even though they're not yeah it's like people who were just teaching breathing techniques not working on dysfunctional breathing habits who had no idea about behavioral science mm -hmm. or respiration or you know our trainings were also uh, calling themselves breath coaches so that was like a big challenge for every breath coach because imagine a breath coach getting a training for years after years after years and then somebody read a technique in a book and then just goes out there in social media you know telling people I'm a breath coach and just teaching breathing techniques and you're like <laughs> no I can't do that you know um, and because I was the one who brought the system and created the whole thing president of the breath coaching federation I was always feeling responsible I, I have to do something yeah. about it so if any of you guys would love to come along and get rid of any symptoms or illnesses that you might be having you know why not try breathing um you know you pick up dysfunctional breathing when i guess you're a very young child or even maybe yeah. before yeah. so you know and like there is much yeah. more to breathing and consciousness work so and i can only yeah. tell like miracles happen yeah and, and there's those testimonials the, on the yeah. website as well aren't yeah. there so you can even have a look and see some of the miracle stories that have occurred. Can you it's on my name, okay. uh, on my website, www.nevsah.com.
Nefsa also is an international set best-selling author, so you can yeah. also purchase her books on Amazon.com or from her website directly. Thank you, Em. Thank you, Nefsa. <laughs>